Ow. <laughs> She's right on my nose. Great job, Cat. <clears throat> okay. So, for people who might be wondering where this came from, shit's been getting crazy. I mean, you can't really see it that well. Oh, I mean, if I walk up close to the camera, that brings my bruises into full contrast. As you can see, things got a little crazy. You might have noticed that my channel took a break on videos for a little while, and that is a culmination of things that, quite frankly, basically killed any form of peace or tranquility I had for several months. To, to begin this long story, I had a friend of mine who had, for a good long while, been a pretty stable, well-to-do sort of person. We were good friends. He lived in his own place. I lived in mine. But through a complex series of events, he lost his job, couldn't pay his rent, and was facing homelessness. And so, being the kind of person that I am, I worked to create a place for him to live where I was at. And though it took him, you know, about six months to find a job and contribute, we helped him through all of that and got him working and helped him to get somewhere. And it wasn't so much out of pity or anything. We were trying to push him to do what we wanted him to do. It was, you know, he's a friend. What do friends do for each other? They help each other out in desperate times, right? So speed ahead a little bit. I had some other things go on in my life, which will be its own video after this one, the year of hell, <laughs> where he was good and he helped keep the house afloat financially when we were in pretty desperate cash situations. And that was all well and good. He you know, took good steps towards repaying the mountain of debt he had and all of this stuff and proved himself good. But when the times became a little better, when things started to pick up again, maybe he had a hard time adjusting to the change, maybe I, I, I couldn't even begin to actually speculate, but this is where things get mm, a little bit out there. If you know anybody, if you've ever done it, or if you even heard about it, tripping on decks, you know, that stuff in Robitussin that makes it work so well, uh, don't do it. Really, 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 really don't do it. And if you do, don't. Don't do it in any more than like once a month bits. Like, Space that shit out. Use some moderation. If you ever take anything from a moderation theme video I do, it's applied here. Any drug you should be moderated on, but really, really this one, really. Because, well, my friend started abusing Robitussin. You know, at first, at first, he had it sort of under control. He was doing it sometimes. I didn't really like him when he was on it, but you know, you kind of have the freedom to do what you want when you're an adult, as long as you aren't breaking the laws and that sort of thing. So. What, what is it my place to really judge him if this is what he's doing sometimes to have some fun, right? But that's where things get complicated for any story of drug addiction and abuse, isn't it? Once that little initial period passes where the self-control starts to erode and the need starts to kick in, regardless of the harm the drug is doing to you, you still want it and you still feel like you need it. And as it was with him, he began abusing it all the time. And it quickly led him into places he should not have gone mentally. If you've ever dealt with somebody with a mental illness, especially something of a schizophrenic nature, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say every moment suddenly became completely on edge, where You'd talk to the guy, and he'd be happy or whatever, but what he was telling you no longer really aligned with what you understand to be real. Like, when the guy's sitting there, you know, telling people to point at a TV screen to make Netflix work because the internet's out, and they really need to point so that everyone's doing it together so that it'll work, and they're, they're getting really emotional about this. Like, this is important. That that's only scratches the surface of what happens. But, yeah, basically, for a good several months, I ended up living with somebody who had drug-dosed themselves into schizophrenia. And, yeah, they were... they were crazy. I mean, 
it's fine to be crazy to a point. Like, I'm not going to sit there and say you're a bad person for being insane. Generally speaking, most crazy people cannot help being crazy. They were born that way or something happened to them. And while it makes things uncomfortable or potentially even dangerous for the rest of us, this is not their fault. And life is difficult enough for these people without us condemning them for something they have no control over. He but, did. but in this particular case, we have somebody who split their own mind apart. Like, he was warned many times by everyone around him, all of his friends, that this was a bad path he was taking. People were seeing the changes happen to him that were not good. And he ignored everyone around him because, well, I mean, he created a whole slew of reasons and justifications for what he was doing. And of course, the science totally backed him up that it wasn't harmful. So how could it be harmful? You know, it's not like people react differently to the same drugs. No. Whatever the case or reasoning he had for what he was doing was irrelevant, though. The point became that he burnt out his mind. He reached a point of complete mental instability emotionally. If you've ever known, met, or been a bipolar person, you understand emotional swings where you're not entirely sure what emotional state this person is going to be in because it's unpredictable. In my friend's case, with his paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar issues going on, the swings were completely unpredictable because the stimuli that would cause the emotional swing did not have to be real. He could suddenly be furious at you because he decided that this thing that you did was actually about screwing him over somehow, even though it literally had nothing to do with him, and that it showed some kind of ill intent towards him through a very convoluted and nonsensical series of logical fallacies. And how do you deal with that? How do you argue with that? How do you do anything with that when what is real and what you say and what you do and how they all should be perceived have no further meaning to this person? What, what, what do you do with that? What do you do with them? How, how can you address that? Really? Because you, you can't dissuade this person from what they're thinking or feeling. You can't say, well, no, no, really, if you look at it logically, this doesn't make sense because they're not in the world of logic or reason or any set of rules beyond what their own mind has decided are real. <sighs> when you live with that kind of person, everything becomes stifled. Everything. You can watch a show. Well, now they're going to be talking about this thing that they believe in, that the show made a something of a mention of, briefly, maybe. That, you know, oh, well, they, they talked about a one in the show, the number one, which relates into my theories of everybody being ones and zeros, and you just lost your show. They're talking at you nonstop. You're trying to watch the show. They do not care anymore. Now they have a truth of the universe that they must share with you right now at all costs. Oh, you're doing a thing? No, well, you can forget that because this nugget of wisdom must enter you right now, immediately post, hey, stop whatever you're doing and listen to really what, once you're done listening to it, has amounted to 25 minutes of completely wasting your time. And if I sound flippant towards someone who is mentally ill, yes, to a point I am. And once you hear the full point of my story and where it ends, maybe you'll understand why I'm not entirely sympathetic in this particular case. Maybe it makes me a little bit bad that I'm not more sympathetic here, but uh, maybe I'll get to that point. Right now I'm still dealing with, you know, all of that. Speeding ahead a little bit, he became irrationally hostile at everybody in the house. Nothing that happened was his fault or had a innocuous explanation. If something, he couldn't find something, one of us had stolen it. If something didn't have an explanation, well, we must have set it up. If things of any sort were going wrong, it was a malicious plan against him. He did nothing to deserve any of this. And, you know, despite the fact that he starts stealing from us and lying to us, and, oh yeah, that other point of he stopped paying rent for three months because he just up and quit his job and then spent the rest of his money on drugs. Yeah. Oh yes, and of course, 
that we hit a critical breaking point at one point during this slide, where he didn't sleep for five days. Of course, it wasn't the drugs. It never could be the drugs. No, he just couldn't sleep, and so he went completely insane towards the end of that. You know, showed up at work, didn't understand how to clock in, stared at the computer screen for 10 minutes because, well, at that point he was hallucinating visually whenever he looked at a computer screen or TV screen, and who knows what he was seeing. But he couldn't figure it out how to clock in. And then after they clocked him in and set him up at work, he left. Just you know, an hour or less, and just got confused, looked at his instructions for how to make a recipe or whatever, and could figure it out, so he just walked away. Showed up hours later, tried to work for maybe half an hour, got confused, and just left. Got picked up by the police because he was downtown, acting disturbed and confused and babbling at people. And he ended up going to the hospital, but through some manner of cunning, mostly blaming it on sleep or the lack thereof, he managed to escape the hospital before they actually really investigated him. And that was the end, really, of his working. And so, he never paid us rent. He didn't have a job. And when it got to a, another stressing point here, I confronted him about his lack of payment and, well, his general shittiness towards everybody else in the house and in general life. Um, and that's where he became our great, basically throwing it in my face that he was on our lease so we couldn't get rid of him and he wasn't going to pay rent and try to stop him. And he wasn't crazy. We were. And we were assholes for calling him crazy. So that basically meant we deserved whatever he did to us. And I didn't take that well. We, we sort of had a little war, if you will, of resources, which, to be quite frank, you can't win a war of resources when you don't have any. So I cut him off from everything, basically, and that seemed to have the effect of pacifying him, and we had a truce for a while, which it almost seemed, you know, this is a thin house. The walls are thin. So if I tried to make a video at any point during this, he would hear it and either badger me for how wrong I was on everything, because that was another favorite of his, was he knew everything and you didn't. Whoever you are doesn't matter. He knew better than you about the thing. Now, you could probably have been, you know, a decades expert on the thing. He had it figured out and you were clearly just a novice. That is absolutely infuriating, by the way, when you're trying to tell somebody a literal scientific fact proven a million times over, and they tell you, no, you're wrong, in fact. The way they see the universe works this way, and this fact that you bandy about like it's meaningful is clearly garbage in the face of his reasoning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really fun. But, um, even though still crazy, he was being calm and tried to explain things to me, and again, crazy, but... I, I smoothed things over enough where we had a truce for a little while where he was not pleasant exactly to be around because he was still very delusional and contradictory, but manageable. He was not hostile. We could at least coexist. But recently, our truce ended. I'm not exactly sure why. You know, again, no real provocation had to have occurred for this to be a thing. All it took, probably, was one night of him sitting there thinking about the way something happened that he didn't like, and the paranoia kicked in. We did it to him, I'm sure. Whatever this thing was that he didn't like, we deliberately set it up so that it would inconvenience him. And from there, you know, when you work an evening shift job, you generally sleep late and wake up in the afternoon so you can do stuff after work. It's one of those things. Well, nine in the morning... As loud as possible, music is not exactly how you want to wake up. And yeah, that was how this campaign he started against us again went, was wake up at 9 in the morning to screaming and or incredibly loud dubstep, with the bass turned all the way the fuck up. Upstairs, my floor and my bed and me are vibrating, like, while I'm trying to sleep, and then didn't really work. My response was to, again, strip him of the things that had been returned to him, like internet access. Mind you, he didn't pay for any of this, food, internet access. My, or our house's decision to share any of these things with him was nothing more than kind consideration. He had no right or access to any of these things by his own effort. So we took them back, 
And I'm guessing that was another straw that broke the crazy camel's back. Because that's when the threats started, the one particular morning where that happened. Pushing in my roommate's door, demanding everyone leaves or he'll call the cops. Now mind you, he had literally no grounds to call the cops and had he done so, they would have told him that there's nothing they could do. Mind you, I had called the cops on him about his threats and his general bad behavior and they wouldn't act. So I knew roughly what would happen. It didn't, you know, fine, you're gonna call the cops, but oh, he's belligerent, hostile, eyes wide, crazy look to them, and he's postured to fight. It's like, so really someone has to do something. And you know, I wake up to all of this and I try to go, I go downstairs. So I go to try to deal with him, to try to see if there's some reasoning or something I can do. Now, he's threatening all sorts of things and he's recording me and he's demanding I admit to this stuff I did. And then when I don't, you know, he threatens me directly. If you lie to me again, I'll fuck you up. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna call in the cops. That's a direct threat. As soon as I pull out my phone, motherfucker just punches me as hard as he fucking can in the nose. Breaks it right then and there, I'm pretty sure. So I got blood running down my nose, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, now I am calling the cops. Which is when he jumps on me and starts wailing on my face as hard as he can. Luckily, I'm kind of skilled at not getting the shit beat out of me. So I managed to block a couple of these hits. He gets a bunch in, unfortunately. But I managed to start choking the shit out of him. Pressing my thumbs up against his windpipe and just pressing. We end up on the floor with me on top of him, pressing down against his windpipe. as pretty much as hard as I can. And he finally gives up. And so I let him go. Of course, my roommate has called the cops at this point. And I figure at this point, if he attacks me again, I have witnesses now. This fight started with just me and him there. We had witnesses by the end, but I figured at this point, if he attacked me a second time after I was winning, could have child probably choked him into unconsciousness or broken his throat, and then he attacks me again, well, I'm well within my rights to do what pretty much ever I need to to defend myself now, aren't I? But fortunately, that didn't happen. He just shit-talked a bunch about how I didn't know how to fight, despite who was giving up and who wasn't. Um, but then the cops show up. And based on the reports of me and my roommate, he gets taken away to the mental institution, which is where he still is. And quite frankly, I hope he remains for quite some time. That's not so much spite talking, it is a little bit, but mostly it's uh, once you're that far gone, you really need professional help to climb back if you can. Quite frankly, I'm pretty sure he permanently did some damage to his brain cooking it for months with Dex. But, you know, I can hope that maybe they can bring him back one day. But, not only is that why I haven't been making videos for a long time until just recently, but I, I, of course, as I do, I want to spool a moral or two out of this for you. Create a lesson that can be learned from all of this. Because if I'm gonna get my nose broken, well, quite frankly, I, I want to spool some morals out of it for somebody, right? First and foremost, be careful with your fucking drugs. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and say, do drugs, don't do drugs, that's not my position or care or opinion on this particular channel. Do as you will, but be the fuck careful with it. Drugs are serious business. I don't care if they're legally prescribed drugs, illegal, or whatever. That shit can and or will fuck you up if you take it cavalierly. Like really, that's even something as simple as weed, if you lose control of that habit, you will be ending up spending money that really should be going other places into your habit. And then you could be up shit creek all of a sudden. But with the harder drugs especially, you're not just worried about your financial situation or losing your job or whatever. You're worried about yourself, your direct physical and mental health. Because becoming dependent on anything that is psychoactive especially, takes its toll on your brain. If you're familiar with the term space cadet, someone who has burnt themselves out on acid, if you've ever seen anybody like that, you'll know very quickly that they're not really all there anymore. That there's, there's some, for lack of a better word, some gaps 
in what should be quick brain function. And this isn't just acid, this isn't just Dax, this is all of them to a point. All drugs that create stimuli within you have the potential to change brain response. It's quite simple. If you take something like Dax that's disassociative regularly, this will inevitably change how you view things. It will change how your brain works. It, it's reactive on the neurological level. It, it's very simple, but I feel like I should spell this out for people because there are so many people, not just my former roommate, but in general all, all over, that think, no, I got this. I, I can handle this. I can do whatever I want with this and I'll be okay. No, you won't. No, you can't. If you start doing it all the time, whatever it is, you lose control of that habit, you're fucked. Really. Like, there's no room for negotiation here. You lose yourself on heroin, you're gonna be dead one day. That's how that works. You lose yourself on meth, well, have you seen the pictures of addicted meth heads? The damage it does to their faces, to their bones, to their entire lives? Well, Dex, quite legal, will still do that to you too. So it's not just the illegal drugs, it's not just the hard drugs, it's not just the ones that can kill you whenever you use them. It's all of them. And if you feel yourself sliding down that hole of, I need this, the only thing you can do for yourself is stop. And if you can't, get help to stop, because that's the only way you're going to prevent yourself from sliding all the way down that rabbit hole and not knowing how to get out, or not even being able to anymore because you have broken yourself. And if I were to spool another moral out of this, it's take your obligations to your situation seriously. One of the things that helped to push my roommate was that he felt he had to do things, but he didn't want to do them, and didn't really understand why he should do them. And I think this created stress in his work environment, his job, having to work a job after not working for months, and then having additional stress on top of it. I think he just basically, part of him said, fuck it, I, I shouldn't have to put up with this. I, why, why should I have to deal with all of this? And so he escaped, first through drugs, then by just quitting and trying to force us through blackmail and threats to support him in it. But we all have obligations to each other, to ourselves, chosen or not, fair or not, reasonable or not. And while the obligations that are pressed against you without your will, consent, or anything suck, Life does this to you. So you do have to work unless you have, you know, money coming in from somewhere else. If you are, you know, of the poor variety of people without inherited wealth or luck or whatever, you have to work. This is, there's no discussion on this. There's no, you get to opt out. No, you will work or you will starve. You will not have a home. You will not have anything. There, there's really no two ways about this. There's no loophole or cheat code to get out of this unless you're the one guy who wins the lottery. Sure, you can do that. It could happen. Guess what? It's not going to be you. I can lay odds on that. You, the guy right there, it's not going to be you. Watch the one guy watching this channel win the lottery now. In your face. But I think my point would stand anyway. That... It's not going to be you who wins the lottery. You're going to have to support yourself through hard work, effort, and distasteful at times things. You're not going to like where you are all the time. You're not going to like what you have to do, the people you have to deal with. In fact, you will probably at some point, if not already, work at a job where you literally hate the ever-living shit out of the guy who is your boss. You wish every bad thing in the world plus some extra stuff you invented upon him and no one else. Like... That guy is the worst thing to ever happen. But guess what? Most of us have had, have, or will have one of those guys right there in our lives, too. We all have to deal with it. And we don't get to just quit and say, you know what, screw it, I don't like this. No, you have to say, screw it, I don't like this, I'll change it, I'll fix it, I'll work harder, I'll get over it, I'll figure out how to overcome, surpass, or otherwise negate this particular obstacle. If your response is, I give up, I quit, well, okay, you have the right to do this, but do not expect or demand the rest of us to carry you. 
because, well, I'm not going to do it. If you want to work, if you're a welfare person who wants to work, can't have a job, or you don't have enough hours to make ends meet, I don't begrudge you a damn thing. You're trying. That's all you can do in this world is try. You need help to get somewhere because you broke your leg and you can't work right now? Get help. Do it. And I'd give you my personal tax dollars without a blink of an eye. That's just, yeah, you're in a bad, shit, shitty situation. Have some help. But if you choose to just say, screw it, I don't like this, I quit, I don't have much sympathy for you at all. That's childish. As much as we all would love to say, you know, I don't want to work. Jobs suck. We don't, none of us really have that freedom, again, except for the lucky few. And if you can't accept or deal with that, and you really want to spiral into self-destruction because you can't accept the way the world works, do it on your own time. Don't drag other people down with you because misery loves company. Don't try to make other people carry you because you are too weak to face reality on your own. Don't do it. Because at some point, somebody who's not like me, if you're like my roommate, will just beat the shit out of you and leave you somewhere. Now, it's not the kind of person I am, but I know quite a few people who are like, well, why don't you just like throw him in a car after beating him for a little bit and drop him somewhere two states away in a field? I, I'm not going to do that. That's not who I am, but... The people who will do that to you, and for far less provocation, are out there. And if you throw a temper tantrum, whine and try to make people carry you, or quit and drag people down, or just screw people over because you're bitter, there will be that guy who does take you down, just because he's tired of your shit. As for the rest of the events that happened to make this the year of hell, basically, 2014, the worst pile of shit ever, um... I'll be covered in subsequent videos. But, yeah. If I could leave you with one last word before I close here. One last little bit to chew on. The only person who's truly 110% looking out for the interest that you want above all else is you. And if you destroy yourself, you have no advocate at all. Just something to think about.